Modelling is essential for everything that we do in the world of systems engineering and enterprise architecture. We need systems engineering as it's very easy for things to go wrong because of the three evils of systems engineering, which are complexity, a lack of understanding, and inefficient communications. These three evils are so important that there are separate mini lectures for each one. One way to address these three evils is through effective modelling. But what do we mean exactly by the term model? We define a model as a simplification of reality. It has to be a simplification of reality, otherwise it is the reality. And we need to apply modelling for a very simple reason. As human beings, we simply cannot comprehend complexity. An average human, according to the world of psychology, can only remember 7 plus or minus 2 things at any one time. Therefore, if your system has more than 10 elements in it, this means that someone will not be able to take it in at once and they will need to, to simplify it. Modelling. As such, a model can be a physical model, a drawing, a mathematical equation, text and even speech. The second that we start to describe something, we are, in effect, applying our own version of modelling. In order to model successfully, we need to adopt a common language that will allow us to look at a system from a number of different points of view, and to zoom in and out of the system as required, to represent different solutions to the same problem, and to present the right information to the right people in a way that is both meaningful and not so abstract as to, to become irrelevant. The model itself must allow us to look at what, what a system looks like, the structure, and how it does things, its behaviour. The language should allow us to visualise the what and the how and ensure that they are consistent with one another. So what are the main languages that are available to us? The favoured language for software engineers, and indeed the most widely used modelling notation in the world, is the Unified Modelling Language, or UML as it's known. The UML was created for a very simple and pragmatic reason. There were too many modelling notations available. In the mid-1990s there were over a hundred languages being used so industry decided it had had enough and hence the UML was born. The UML provides a toolkit of 13 different diagrams that allow a model to be created. The preferred language for systems engineers is the systems modelling language, or the SysML as it's known. SysML is not, however, a different language from UML as it is derived from UML and shares the same key concepts and techniques. If UML is the parent language, imagine that SysML is a dialect that is spoken by systems engineers and that brings some new mechanisms and techniques that can be added to the UML to increase its power and effectiveness. Each of these languages has its own set of advantages over the other, but bear in mind that the use of one does not preclude the use of the other, or indeed any other modelling notation. In fact, in the real world, there will always be a number of different languages being used on any given project. Both UML and SysML, however, due to their underlying meta-models, allow themselves to be tailored to be applied in a particular field or to work in conjunction with another modelling language. Regardless of which of these languages you use, the single most important underlying theme is that of consistency. It is consistency that turns a set of diagrams into a true model, and it is consistency that provides us with the confidence that the model is correct, complete and coherent. Modelling is not just about blindly applying UML or SysML, and in order to implement modelling and realise its full potential, we need three things. Competent people, effective processes and sharp tools, and in that order. People need to follow processes, but only a comp competent person can execute one effectively. The process should describe the approach to the modelling, but it must not be driven by the tool. The tool must be powerful, but it should enable the process and empower the person. At the end of the day, remember, a fool with a tool is still a fool.